Now, cold case. A young North Kingstown man vanished. His car found deep in the woods with few clues as to what happened. For five years, his family has relentlessly pursued answers to painful questions. Where did their beloved son and brother go, and will he ever return? Kim Kalunian joins us now with the disappearance of Michael Sanat Jr. Kim? Well, Mike and Shannon, a 2000 black Honda Civic provided investigators with the biggest clue so far about where Michael went. Inside that car, they found fast food receipts and uneaten hamburger, but no keys, no cell phone, and to this day, no signs of the man known as Mikey. South Kingstown's Great Swamp Management Area. In the winter, a desolate landscape of mud and spindly trees. Quiet. The swamp transforms in the summer heat. It was a spot Michael Sinat Jr. was no stranger to. He loved nature. He loved to go hiking. He liked his solitude. Um, but just a very quiet demeanor about him. June 13th, 2019 didn't seem unusual to Ann Felici. Her son, by her accounts, seemed to be himself. He got a full tank of gas. He got some takeout food. Um, and he went grocery shopping. But he did do something out of the ordinary later that night. Without a word to his brothers, he left the house around 1.30 in the morning. About a half hour after he left, South Kingstown police spotted Mikey's car pulled over on the side of Route 138. He told police he was a Grubhub driver looking for directions, but a later check of receipts showed Mikey did not take any orders that night. Police in their report said he didn't display any obvious signs of distress, and about 16 minutes later, they watched him drive off into the night. 2.20 a.m. It's the last recorded sighting of Mikey. Anne didn't even know her son had gone out until the following morning, and when texts and calls to Mikey went unanswered, she reported him missing that afternoon. Terrible. <laughs> just wondering and waiting, hoping he was going to be walking through the door. But Mikey didn't come home. On June 17th, South Kingstown police discovered his car. It was parked at Great Swamp. It's very, very dense, thick uh, vegetation that it's almost impossible to walk through very thick parts of it. North Kingstown police detective Greg Miga has been working Mikey's disappearance for nearly five years, hopeful that one of the dozens of searches of the area would turn up a meaningful clue. At this point, there's nothing to suggest evidentiary wise that uh, Mikey is anywhere else, and there's nothing to suggest at this point that he met up with anybody. I, I believe something happened to him in the parking lot. Private investigator Michael Clementi isn't so sure, saying Mikey's steering wheel was turned to the right, indicating he parked in a hurry. So, something happened before he entered the woods, I believe. Days after Mikey's disappearance, searchers found two clues in the woods. A dock line Mikey had purchased the day before he was reported missing and the bag it was sold in. As far as how the other stuff got there, I have no idea. Clementi wonders if Mikey was worried about his safety, saying his recent attempt to buy a gun and his acquisition of that rope don't indicate a man gripped by suicidal thoughts, but instead one looking to protect himself. As I don't want him to be forgotten. Last summer, we were there as Anne and other volunteers once again scoured the punishing terrain of the swamp. And we found the rope at the bottom of the hill over there, campfire here. Hoping for something, anything, to give them answers. I just keep hoping he's going to just walk through the door one day as if nothing happened. And we just have to have that hope. And Mike and Shannon, North Kingstown police did try to ping Mikey's cell phone, but they inadvertently pinged the wrong number at first. And by the time they pinged his actual phone, it had been turned off. Were they able to access his location history at least before the turn that yeah. phone was turned off? Yeah, it's a great question. And they were able to access that location history. And it did show that he was somewhere in the Great Swamp management area, but specifically where is just too hard to pinpoint, according to MEGA. Now that phone and Mikey's bank card have never been used since his disappearance and of course if anyone has any information about where Mikey might be North Kingstown police want to hear from you.
Kim, man, you've got a brand new way where people can actually learn about these local cold cases. That's right, Mike. We're really excited about this. We're going to be debuting our new podcast series on cold cases wherever you get your podcasts. It's available right now, and new episodes will be coming out every week. Of course, you can always learn more about this case and others on WPRI.com. Just go there to tell us about ones you think we should investigate. Our tip line is also right there on your screen if you have any information on these or any other cases. One eight seven seven RI solve. The podcast just another way to get the word out. Exactly. Get some tips. Yes. All right, Kim Kaludian, thank you.